get in there. Then all the squares will populate. No, no, this is different. This is on YouTube. Oh, I don't think I've ever done YouTube before. I there really stay away from video. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> anything. So um, we're. I'm watching people, and I've got a whole pile of comments over here on YouTube. So I will let Pia know if uh, if any of them she needs to answer any of the rest of us. Um, so I'm talking with uh, Pia Coleman here on YouTube, but it's transmitting over in YouTube. The magic of technology, which never ceases to amaze me. I was just letting Pia know that it's the first time I've attempted to do this with the streamed YouTube live. So um, there was a lot of tech learning in the background. Um, but I am, I'm so, I'm so happy to actually invite Pia Coleman in here because I've been an admirer of her so many years. Her designs are phenomenal. And I think she probably shares my love of cables. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to you to kind of give people a little, I suppose, a little backstory on you, how you started and what you like designing. Oh, all right. So if you guys don't know me, my name is Thea Coleman. Um, I design under the name Baby Cocktails, but I do use my own name a lot now. Um, I'll, I'll very briefly touch on the reason I don't design under my name is because when I first started out, there was a porn star with the same name and um, <laughs> somebody Googled her on the playground when my kids were little and walked out to me and were like, I I found out I was gonna knit a hat of yours and don't worry, I won't tell anybody. Um, so I went home and Googled her and realized that I could not start a business under that name in the knitting world because people would be Googling and finding um, not knitting. So um, the other thing that I love besides knitting is cocktails. Um, I tend to make a lot of them. I tend to drink a lot of them. And um, after a background in advertising, I also knew that I would not be able to design sweaters every day. But if I had something else to talk about, um, that you guys would have reasons to come back and chat. Um, and it provided an entire litany of different pattern names and angles. And, and, and I do really love um, cocktails. I collect vintage glassware and um, having the the business named after the cocktails and having it tied in there so tightly means also whenever I do anything related to drinking, it's tax deductible, which is great. <laughs> um, oh, that was very well thought out, Thea. Yeah. Clever. Yes, yes. <laughs> it, it worked out really well. Both of my favorite hobbies are now part of my um, my tax returns every year. <laughs> But uh, that really doesn't tell you anything about what I do in terms of the knitting. Um, that's just kind of the background of starting. Your sweater's probably a bit of a dead giveaway there. <laughs> yeah. So um, I always, I didn't really, I knew how to knit in high school. I didn't knit much in college or in my early 20s, although I had friends that knit. And once I had kids, I actually had a career in corporate advertising. Um, I did national television um, ads, like the the Got Milk campaign that was popular in the United States was something I worked on. Um, I worked on cruise ships and baseball and beer and all that. But then I had children and somebody had to stay home and traveling around the world, uh, around the, the country doing focus groups and, and shooting commercials was, was something that I had to stop. So um, as someone whose brain just kind of never stopped working, I needed something to do while my kids were doing what they were doing. Um, and knitting came back into my life in a really big way. So um, first I had a knitting group that I would I would go and knit with. And then I can't follow a pattern. Like I literally cannot knit a pattern as it exists without changing things. So there were a few people. I was very lucky in, in where I was in the world. Um, Boston has a lot of people that had already dipped their toes into the industry. And a couple of my friends in my knitting group had published things in Interweave. And they were like, you're pretty much doing what we do. You should give it a shot. Mm -hmm. So yeah. originally, I designed some little hats and a couple things and just sort of put them out there to see if they would sell. Um, and over time... Um, as you Googled Thea Coleman, you'd see less porn pictures and more knitting. And, um, <laughs> you know, it kind of evolved from there. It, it's a career I did not expect to uh, continue and take off the way it did. I, I sort of thought it would be a, a, a hobby and a, a way to buy shoes and do things 
uh, have a little cash when my kids were little. I, I think did. I was. I think there's very, very few network designers that start down that path deliberately. It's often an accidental one. I think. Yeah, I was always going back to advertising in my head. Yeah. I, I was. Yeah. That was where I was headed. Actually, um, that probably leads on to another question. Does advertise? Do you do you pull a lot of the theory and a lot of what you did? from advertising into like obviously not the knitwear but how you sell things or how you promote yourself I think the biggest thing that as so my position in the agency I was an account person so um, an account supervisor account manager okay. account that sort of thing and my job was always to take creative ideas and then to really corral them in they had to fit within a budget they had to fit within a schedule mm -hmm. I had to do a lot of um, negotiating with creative teams about like, yes, I know you really want to use a llama here, but like we can't. Um, I had a lot of arguing with clients about like, yes, I know that you've like 36 lines of copy here, but we've got to get it down to six or whatever it was. Yeah, And I do yeah. think that the skill of combining something creative into a practical box is super helpful. Um, yeah. I also was taught a process in terms of creating any ad campaign where you kind of start with this really big picture. You do research, you do creative brief, you kind of make mm -hmm. things fit into a brief. You, you continue yeah. working concentric circles and narrow things down. Yeah. And I do think that that is how I approach design. Um, yeah. Yeah. Process. That you, yeah. That you know how to take all of the pieces and make a whole from it. And like you, you can probably see how I started off as an engineer, which gives it a very different slant. And like, I like numbers, I like order, I like my spreadsheets. And that's the part where I come from and having a small bit with textile design. So like, I like the initial spark and then I'm like, okay, let's crunch that numbers down. And that's right. Part. And I'm the opposite. I like the creative half. I hate the numbers, yeah. but I do know how to take the stuff that I love and then kind of yeah and you know how it. to get everyone working the fact that you've got multiple tech editors so you know that they'll do the job that they do well and you get to do the part that you like so that you got yeah. you know how to actually organize it all together yeah it's, sadly yeah, the one piece of it that I should have taken with me a little bit more seriously is the whole idea of um I mean I do understand that baby cocktails and and the cocktail thing and wrapping it around the yarn like branding wise that that works really well but I, there's a lot of things that other people do in terms of, of advertising and stuff that I know I should do. And here I am 14 years in, I didn't do it and I'm never going to, you know, yes. to do things really properly, to like be, have a logo that's always used in the same way to, mm -hmm. I, I create my own patterns in Word. I never mm -hmm. hired a designer to like format things nicely yeah. because to be yeah. honest, my head is always in the knitting and the design piece of it. Yeah. And now that I run things, I just never put my head out of that to focus yeah. on other pieces. But and it's still working well enough for working. you. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got and like, I the mean, investment, the big thing. I'm sorry. The, the work life balance is working for you. So Right, right, right. Yeah. And it seems silly five or six or 10 years in to go make an investment in like, rebranding just so things are polished in a way that they should be um, right even though I've been trained that way everything's yep. neat and orderly and it makes sense mm -hmm. people can knit the patterns but um but I I took some lessons from advertising I guess and then I left a few to go well yeah. you know I should yeah. but I'm not gonna it's an, I I do sometimes I am quite envious of you seem to have you have your very clear focus on this is what I want my days to look like this is what I want to spend my time on the fact that you're able to actually you know build charity work into your week as well and you know that that's that's very significant. Um, right, right. Well, and it is just me. Like I know a yeah. lot of other designers have staff. I have one very good friend, Annie, who helps me answer questions yeah. and I bounce things off of her. Um, she probably helps me like less than four or five hours a week. Um, it's it, whereas, you know, like, so I also have to make choices and yeah. I have had to draw some really clear boundaries about you know, a lot of people make videos. A lot of people do all these other things, the bells and whistles they're adding. Yeah. And I want to design like that yes. is what I want to do. So 
And and like you said, one day a week to go and do this thing that I do is very important to me as well. So, you know, that's, that's a 20% of my, my day, my five day week. Yeah. And it is what I love about talking with other designers is that everyone takes a really different approach because I, I kind of there are certain things that I want to spend my time doing. And I ended up going down the route of I also realized that I didn't want to work alone. I actually found I went through as my child because mine kind of came in tangent with my kids. And as they grew up and they were out more, I'm like, this is really kind of lonely. So I made the decision to actually grow the business so that there was more than just me and that so that was and they're both they're just different ways of actually going about doing it but again it was putting a what do I want my day-to-day to look like and that being the driving force of the direction you end up going in right um, right and but, I but, like to work with people like yeah in, in during a day I I've had lots of collaborations with people I definitely choose my yarn based on, you know, this is going to be excuse to talk to this person that I love or this farmer that I love or what I like. I bring people in on a more of a project basis all the time. I also Mm -hmm. got a dog. Having a dog (laughs) means there's people in my life, but they're not knitting people. I, 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 I can't believe it took us this long to actually get around to doing a collaboration. We're, we're very slow off. I know I met you (laughs) first at Edinburgh years. Remember, we walked out of our Airbnb onto the sidewalk yeah. and I went, holy yeah. shit, that's Carol Feller. <laughs> and you were like right there. And we walked I, but, to, the, to the thing with you. Yes. And then afterwards in um, not Knit Nation, in another, um, the, the, uh, in London, you were doing a the cocktail. Pom-pom. Yes. The pom pom. I don't know what the name of the, um, the event it was. It was their, it was the anniversary party. Yeah. And they flew a whole bunch of us out and we had an Airbnb in, um, in a, a neighborhood nearby and um we each did a thing i did a, yeah. a talk on gin um yeah for that. i came to us <laughs> and we were able to drink gin do you remember that i had people like coming up and tasting never happened in the states that would never <laughs> doesn't usually happen over here very often either so it was i have somebody questioning over here um asking what the jumper you're wearing is and if it's one of your patterns oh of course yes um, <laughs> this is called pomplemousse, which is French for uh, a grapefruit, and it's made in a yarn by a dyer from Canada, um, La Blue Poussière, which means like blue dust. It's her hand-dyed Erin Dorset, and I was actually, when we started the thing, I said to Carol, you know, this is one of those patterns that I knit, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago I designed this. And I absolutely love it. I wear it so much that the natural dye has faded from a deeper pink to this light pink as it's been washed each season. But um, it has these cables on it and it's um, it's actually quite cropped. And the other cool thing so about cute. it is the cables kind of scoop down and the sides kind of scoop up a little bit because of the difference in gauge slip stitches versus- Sometimes that works in your there, favor, I, doesn't it? When it kind of pardon? leans into- I, sometimes that kind of works in your favor, letting letting the stitches do what they want to do. Yeah, yeah, I I love this one, and um, I actually the woman who runs the company, Shani Theret, I'm probably saying that wrong. She does such beautiful hand dyes. If um, go check her out. It's uh, blue poussière, as in blue dust in French. Um, and I'm looking. There's another um, uh, comment over here. Amanda says some creative forces transcend branding. More power to you, Thea. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think that. So anyone else who does have questions, I've got the stream open next to me here and I'll pop them over to Thea. So just put them in there if there's anything you want to ask. So we sh- I should probably talk about a project. The reason we I did. Together. I don't know if I'm allowed to show them or not, but I have all my squares. <laughs> no, 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 no. Squares okay, I'm not allowed to show you guys. I have, I have 12 secrets. You can put squares. it like this and show them the edges and the colors if you want to, but not the okay. squares themselves. <laughs> I can do I can do that. There you These go. These are the 12 see. squares that I designed for Carol. <laughs> that's that's as much as I can see people going to call in and like zoom on the photograph. They right? will, they and will. They look back. The, um, I don't think you the one the, all of the detailed ones are in the middle. So keep it would secret in. And yeah. I, I didn't realize um how different our approaches to things were until we started going through the whole thing and particularly as we were editing the patterns and it, I found it really interesting, um, just the, the way you approached it and you didn't even realize how important some things were to you. No, until you started working through it because this is your first I mean, blanket. 
to be completely candid, when you first walked up to me and you were like, you know, we talked about the project and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you, you were like, it's just, it's 12 cables that, you know, I was like 12 swatches. Like I can bang out a swatch a day. And we talked about this. I had like eight months or something. I'm like, I can, I can space them out like one day a week. It'll be fine. Um, I, it was even a window into my own process because I did not realize how the minutia of a square was going to, um, I mean, I know I am a perfectionist about edges, details, mm -hmm. transitions, centering things, all of that. Like I do know that, but I have yeah. never been so aware of it until I was <laughs> told to put a cable on a 10 by 10 square and then all of the things that would bother me about it. And then all yeah. of the little tweaky, it, I did not, none of these cables except maybe the first textured one took one day at all. Yeah. Um, they, they, and some of them really tortured me for a little while because I wasn't willing to give up on the design and yeah. move to something that would fit better in the square. The yeah. You I were just, you're going to keep working it and tweaking I was gonna it. Like and it did for make it. Yeah. Um, yeah. They so, yeah, are there's... beautiful. Everyone should know they're absolutely gorgeous. So it was abs it was so worth all of the effort. <laughs> right. I do respect the blanket more than I did when uh, in the beginning, I'm like, this is going to be the best. I get to talk to Carol. I'm going to do this like easy peasy thing. And um, no, no, it, a lot of thought went into it. More thought yeah. than I anticipated went into it. Yeah. 90% of these squares. Yeah. Two of them I, I, I do I do hope and I suspect that some of those then can transcend in, into another second life afterwards in another project or in so, you know in I know you else, guys which... so I'll I'll tell the knitters that we had <laughs> talked about I I am in love with Carol's glossy yarn now. So yeah. hopefully when this is over, <laughs> you know, there might be a sweater or something um in one of that these was. patterns in the blasted yarn either later this year or next winter yeah. um depending on what the rest of my life looks like but um that would be amazing. I was definitely hooked on this beautiful yarn and and um, you were I re when you started off uh, when you began and you were saying you were blocking them and you were steam blocking it and you're like I'm just going to wash this one to see and it totally took you by surprise right how different it was <laughs> oh gosh yeah, that was another, it's so, so as a designer, I am always very, very cognizant that I want my sweater. I don't, I don't have time to redo things. So I prefer a steam block to a wet block on my sweaters. Um, and that's just how I've always done things. Mm -hmm. But I wet blocked one of these and the difference in the fabric between steam blocking and wet blocking was incredible. Um, yeah. they, I, I actually have a sweater now that I am going to wet block. Yeah. Um, and I have worked. Yeah, because I was talking with Pia, and I mean, anyone who's tried Blasta before will know this from me the fact that Blasta is it's milled in Donegal. And because it's a more, it's, um, they don't have the full, I suppose, the full range of finishing processes that you'd have in really large commercial mills. Like it's big by Irish standards, but it's not an enormous mill. So when they they up when they finish it, it is washed, but then it's not um, steamed or you know fulled in the actual mill itself, because this the mill will do yarns for things like Kate Davies, and but then the yarns that they do for her, they go to I think it's Yorkshire, and it goes through the steaming process, which basically opens up and blooms the yarn. So I always think that the washing with the blaster, you're you're finishing the yarn out, that it's not finished until it's yeah. washed. And I would think, I mean, I work with so many small, small producers, you know, half the stuff I do is, is um, spun up at Green Mountain Spinnery, which is also a very small place. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder if I had been washing my stuff, um, what some different. of those fabrics would look, I mean, as long as you work your gauge to how you block, it doesn't really yeah. matter. Yeah. But I wonder what some of those sweaters would feel like. Um, yeah, like the gauge doesn't change dramatically, but I think that the way the stitches interact with each other, it looks really different. Because I always think just the stitches fill out. It's like someone has just given it a little go and it just yeah. poofs up, you know? Um, Absolutely. No, that was that was another fun. Like you push you push me to do a few things without realizing <laughs> in this Very project. gently. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No. And you I mean, you didn't even physically push me to do it, but the project pushed me to do things. It's very easy as someone who has been 
uh, successfully doing something for X amount of years to be like, no, this works for me. I don't need to try this other thing. But the truth is, you know, it was a nice reminder that I should also, if there's something I can try that isn't really going to eat a lot of time. Um, it, it's worth a it, shot. It's something to try. Yeah. yeah. You know, like trying new yeah. things is still something I should be doing. Yeah. Um, and for me, actually, the clubs I've been doing, because we've been doing like particularly seasons clubs, which have become technique focused. I've been challenging myself to learn new techniques or things that I'm like, oh, that looks kind of cool, but I've never really dug into it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to learn all about that. And it's been, it's actually been a very interesting way of, of keeping myself fresh and keeping, keeping the challenge going, I suppose, really, you know? Yeah. Um, it's not that I don't want to, it's often a time constraint, you know? Yeah. I, you can't I afford have, for things to go wrong. <laughs> I know. And, yeah. and this, like the whole time I've been doing this, I've been paying for my girls' college tuitions. So it it's like there is a there is an amount that needs to happen. Um, yeah. And, you know, once that's done, then I can sit back and like not release something for a whole month if I really, yeah. really want to yeah. and learn yeah. a new technique. But I need things I can incorporate quickly at this point mm -hmm. still. Yeah. Um, I really, I really, really would love to play with brioche, but I'm not going to design something in brioche. It's something I've never worked in before. That's yeah. high on my list um, yeah. of things when I have time to really yeah. just like do. And, just, and, and I, but I have a terrible habit of, I, I fall into you. There's a lot of things that the patterns have to pay the bills for but I, I I attempt to give myself a big enough window where I'm like, okay, I I've said I'm doing this, so I have to do it now. That I basically back myself into a corner and it has to be done. And it does. You kind of surprise yourself what you'll do when you're kind of when you this have is to. what's happening now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we're doing this. <laughs> um, Libby is asking. I think this is the link for the Canadian designer uh, dyer. I haven't seen it yet. I, I, maybe someone will pop it up there, but we can put it in afterwards as well. It's it's um, a B L E U P O U I S S E I R E. I think. Um, and we've got. Uh, I'm just looking through. I don't think there's any other questions. Oh, Andrea was also saying she loves hearing that there was deep thought into how this. Uh, about how the squares will work and they really attract you, uh, that really attracts you. Excellent. Yeah, we and also, the, oh, sorry. No, work away. I was gonna say in terms of the squares, there was also something else that sort of happened, which was interesting. And you can tell me to stop talking if I'm saying too much. I know, go for but it. But originally, um, Carol sent me this white yarn um, and then she sent me Blasta, like sent me Blasta and as soon as I started working with the white yarn, I wanted the colors. Um, and as soon as I went from, okay, does it have to be an all white blanket or can be a color blanket? I chose four colors. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I chose four colors, and then I knew I had 12 squares, it all started falling into place in terms of organization. Yeah. And each color has three different types of design. Mm -hmm. which maybe I'll stop at that and not say more but no no that's um, I was you can kind of say just the, I mean you can actually give overviews of the idea of it starting with text okay. series and some of the other so yeah, so yeah there's it. there's sort of three there's three categories of squares for each color the first one is considered more of a almost a background or texture stitch because you can't have a blanket just full of cables where they're going to fight each other some things need to recede into the background a little bit more so um there are there are for every color. There's one that I consider more of a background or a or a more subtle designs uh, square. Then there's one that I consider um, cables worked in columns, whether that is columns all the way across or whether that's a single column in the middle or however I did it. But it was sort of a vertical line, uh, vertical lines kind of idea. And then every color also has one square. That's all over. Um, and that was another, like, I didn't anticipate having those categories and having that amount mm -hmm. of, of organization either. Um, mm -hmm. And then once those existed, it was a case of making sure that none of the textures I had already done were going to be similar to the next one. And none of the cables I had already done were going to be similar to the next ones. Mm -hmm. Also, none of them had to, they all sort of have 
I don't know if I want to call it like an elegant vibe, but like the lines are a little undulating everywhere. Like nothing is boxy. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, everybody had to go together, which was a a sort of a third challenge that I didn't anticipate. Yeah, you definitely set yourself a lot of challenges in the blanket. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So in terms of like what went into it, that was that's kind of yeah. another piece that went into it that we didn't anticipate, but it turned out yeah. to kind of define the project and be kind of fun. Yeah. Does yeah. And sense? and you can't and you can't tell a lot of those until you get into it because until you're actually really kind of got them in your hands and you're seeing them together. I've got the stack of the four colors that you use back here. So on the site, when it goes live, we've named all, we've put a few different groupings of four colors together for people to be able to pick. So these are all in the blast. There's the four you have that we've called honey, which I think that this is all a courtesy of Laura. She loves naming things. And I think, and, didn't we put a honey in the cocktail? Wait, I think. Yes. Yeah, the absolutely. There, yes, there will, of course, be a cocktail. And we've got a little booklet that will come with it. And there will be a cocktail and a and a non-alcoholic version of the cocktail. Um, this one here is Dandelion, which, I, again, I love the, the name of it. Um, Laura is a naming queen. And I've got down here is this is Heather's. So we've got like purples and blues. And the one I did, if I can pull it back here. So I knit when I was doing the um, the blanket square videos, I did a different colors so that we could see it in two different colors. And I used mine's all blues. So you could see it's one's a marl blue and then there's three different shades of blues. Right. And the final one, sorry, the final one of the Blasta anyway, is this variation here, which is our dark neutral. So we kind of got a charcoal down to cream and then a marl between. And we will actually have one um, a golov which is the cream one, which is the Galway wool, because that's the only one that will have a single color option if someone wants to go at just a plain color. And last year we had a Galway blanket club and the Galway wool sold out. So there may be some people who are really eager to get hold of the Galway. So this is a a good way to pre-order it, basically. (laughs) Right, right. Um, Yeah, like the whole color thing made it sort of fun, too. The difference between light, dark, and marl, and which cables showed up well in which colors also yeah. became a very, um, uh, what's the word, intentional uh, decision. Because some things really wouldn't have shown up in the, in the marl, um, yeah. but could go in the, uh, in the nidur. I'm saying it wrong. Um, which one? The, the cream. Nidur. Nidur. Yeah. 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 Nidur. Yeah. In the nidur. nidur and then I also had to be the the yellow, um, life no, the yellow and the cream. Yes, those yeah. showed the cables. You could put any amount of detail in those, and it would yeah. show up. The gray has a lot of white heather in it, so mm-hmm. the things you I chose for the gray were bolder and have mm-hmm. more textured relief between the background and the foreground, yeah. so that they would pop in the gray. Um, and Marl's love texture. And the Marl obviously has the things that are the most um, uh, bolder so that they mm-hmm. really will show up. Um, and you can put anything that's in the Marl in the other colors, but yeah. some of the other patterns might not work in the Marl. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because Marl, you just like it's, I love the way Marl's look when you're knitting them up, but you do have to be careful because you've got particularly the darker ones, you're going to lose a little bit of detail. I'm looking over here. We've got uh, Jay Alexander. I guess I'm going to have to knit a blanket. Those colors look amazing. And I'm sure Thea's patterns are going to be out of this world. Uh, Libby saying, uh, Liz, I'm laughing. I haven't finished the Galway blanket yet, but I'm excited about this one too. <laughs> People are going to be swimming in blankets. You could just make uh, some new squares in your old blanket. Um, hang on. So uh, Sarah said, if if we block by a method the design uh, that the designer does, does that affect the drape of the finished sweater? And with cables, is it better to steam versus wet block? Um, I I think it's kind of personal preference, really. Like they'll both work, right? I mean, I'll, right. I'll open that up to you, but that's I kind of to me, it's like however you're going to f- you treat your finished sweater. It's like yeah, if you're exactly going to what I was going to say. It's total personal preference. Um, I find steaming gives me more control over my final size because I pin it out exactly to size and then I steam the hell out of it. Um, and I've always, I mean, it definitely, there's a difference between my block fabric and my steam fabric. Um, and I make sure that that is how I've done my gauge. 
Um, and as long as you calculate your gauge according to your blocking method and you like your final fabric, my I find steam blocking also gives me the same drape. I wouldn't say that the, the difference in um, the yarns that we used here was in drape. It was more in sort of the the, the stitch definition, I think. Of the, yeah, stitch definition. Um, but uh, I was going to say one more thing. And also, uh, that's going to vary by yarn. You know, yeah. like that, like it was so different in this yarn. It might not be different yeah. in another yarn. Where these because this is a awesome. yeah, because this is woolen spun. Woolen spun will often have more of a like that's more likely to bloom more dramatically and open up. Whereas I find worsted spun either they're going to both look really similar. I think. Um, right. Right. I've got. You could, I guess, got, do an experiment when you swatch, make two swatches. Yeah, exactly. And then what the Monica is. was asking, yay for cocktails, one for each square. <laughs> we did not come up with one for each square, but I absolutely encourage you to do a different one for each square and then tell me what they are. Put them on Instagram. And, and I've got Liz's responses. Monica will never get the blanket knit. And I think you might be right on that one. Well, one <laughs> cocktail per square, that's less than I drink. So, um, you know. Libby was asking if the color options are available yet. She couldn't find them yesterday. Um, we've got photographs up on the blog right now. It's tomorrow night, the 15th at 8 p.m. Irish time. So 3 p.m. the U.S. is when everything will be live. Uh, make sure you're in the newsletter because we'll send a notice out. We are sending an update out in our newsletter because we had the wrong date on the newsletter saying it was the 16th. It is tomorrow. It's the 15th that's coming out. So we'll we'll update that because we got our wires crossed across the way. Um, oh, and yes, and someone was saying, I've also shown the yarn combinations in the other YouTube video I did. So I hold them up and I give you the names so you can see them a bit more clearly there. But the whole thing will be live tomorrow night. Um, yeah, Laura's popping in here. Um, What's the pattern in yarn in the blue cardigan in Thea's background? <laughs> oh, ha. so this is... I get away um, with anything. <laughs> okay, this, I have to take off the shawl, is the next pattern that uh, will go live for me. Um, it doesn't have a name yet. It very much needs a name. Um, it is done. I shouldn't talk about other people's yarn while I'm here with Carol. But um, it's done in a New Zealand yarn that I've used before. Um, the company is called Happy Go Knitty. Uh, the woman who runs it is named Helene. The yarn is gorgeous. This is an Arapawa, which is a yarn that you wouldn't really see outside of New Zealand. It's um, very That's the soft. type of sheep, is it? Um, yeah, yeah. She does all okay. kinds of the New Zealanders. There's possum. There's all kinds of stuff coming out of New Zealand. Um, I'm really hoping that the more I've, this is my third or fourth collaboration with Happy Go Nitty. I'm really hoping to channel that into a trip to New Zealand someday. That um, sounds like a very good plan. But yeah, it needs a name. Um, and I'm going away this weekend on a, I don't teach very often. Um, but as I told Carol, I would be happy to come to Ireland and teach. But um, I am teaching this weekend. And so when I get back next week, we're going to finish everything up on this sweater and it should be live either late next week or early the following week. Um, and it is an air and weight knit. So um, you Fast. could maybe do it with a little Blasta if you really wanted. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause Blasta, I've got it down as a DK weight, a heavy DK weight, but it's one that actually will happily go into a huge range of gauges. Yeah. I, I kind of thought of it as a worsted. Yeah, it's, a, it's kind of because worsted doesn't tend to happen. You know, there's not a lot of worsted over here. So that DK has a much bigger size range size generally. Range, yeah. If you were selling it in the UK, I think it would probably, I mean, the US, it would probably fall more into the worsted range. Worsted I think. range. And yeah. I'm also loving now taking a thinner yarn and adding a little strand of mohair or something else just to get to gauge. Yeah. Um, which yeah. would also give your Blasta a softer halo similar yep. to what this has You're i just probably enjoy color. we've got the blaster is two ply we've got a we've got a blaster light which is a single really thin one and we often do that with mohair so i've got um, one called iskra where i've done it in brioche and it's incredible because it gives because it's because it's a single ply and it's woolen spun it's not very strong so it can easily break, but with the actual mohair, it gives it an awful lot of a strength. Little, so yeah. yeah, it's. Really I'm in a phase right now where I'm I'm loving. I'm 
I knit a cabled sweater in a Derivium Natura's Gelat, which is yep. one of my favorite basic yarns. Yep. Um, and the sample I knit is just like this much too sh small on me. And I really want to own this sweater. And a, a yep. local farm here in the States sent me an entire bag of this beautiful DK silk polypay Cormo mix that's just stunning. Mm -hmm. um, and I decided to knit myself a second sweater with their DK and some La Bien Aime silk mohair to get yeah. gauge. Um, yeah, it sounds and gorgeous. It's turning out beautiful in the yeah. cables. And mine's going to fit me and I'm going to have to give the little one to my sister. But I'm, I'm sure she's just really broken up about having to take your sweaters. <laughs> she, she might be. Well, she used to model all of them. And then she went off to have a bunch of, of tiny boys. And uh, actually, now she's going to start modeling again. Ah, so You just have to start seeing more little boy sweaters as well. Or, you know, not so little boy sweaters probably along the way. I don't knit. Ba I don't knit baby sweaters. Yeah. I just. Well, if they're getting, they get bigger. They can be. <laughs> I know. I give books. Medium, si medium size human sweaters. I do have another um, blanket question for you. Because, of course, yeah. when people order the blanket, what we've done is we've done 12 squares. So that will be, and that's the, um, the lap size of the smaller one. It'll be about 30 inches by 40 inches when they're all seen together. There's also a throw size, which is going to be 20 squares, which means that they'll have 12 different squares and then they'll have to pick an extra eight to add to. Do you have any, or if you were going to do it and you were like, these are the only 12 squares I'm going to work with, how would you put it together if you were going to do a throw? Or do you think you just experiment as you're going along? So I kept laying these out on my dining room table, sort of wanting to answer that question for myself. Yeah. I think the thing that matters the most to me is not having two of the same colors touch mm -hmm. and not having two of the same squares touch. And then As in the design type squares, the, the three. Yeah. 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 Like making everything a, a, a more of a patchwork. Mm -hmm. um, and then if it was me, I know exactly what I would do, which is whichever yeah. ones had been my favorite to work. Because I guarantee there's going to be four that I like less than the others. Yep. You know, and I'd be like, these are the these are the ones I want to do more. They of. sit it out for the second turn, and the rest, the other ones, get a second run around the sun. They yeah. do. They <laughs> do. That's probably how I would choose. Yeah. Um, and I but, would imagine as well for people knitting it, depending on the level of cable experience they've got coming in, that might determine it as well. Is that they're right. like, okay, there's a couple over here and I don't have, I'm not at the point. Or where I didn't I can, enjoy I it as much. Those. Exactly. Yeah. Or I had to think too hard about it and I want to finish off the blanket. I'm going to do a few more. I actually think extra of the textured ones works particularly well if you want to get the blanket out and you can, you know, you can intersperse them a bit more easily than the heavily cabled as well. Oh yeah, um, more textured ones is all. and yeah. there is there's is one square that's completely a simple background square that you could throw in yeah. as many of those as yeah. you want. Um and then where you're going to be knitting them. You know, if you're going to yeah. be knitting them on the bus or wherever and you really want just like easy knitting or if you're yeah. going to be sitting focused, you know, that that also yeah. depends. It, it's actually one of the things I particularly like about a blanket in, in small pieces is that you can actually pick one up and work on it for a couple of days and, and then you set it down and put it, but that they're, e they're, they're like bite-sized little bits of knitting that you're not taking an entirely big, because most of mine probably like you tend to be seamless. So with things like sweaters, if you're getting to the bottom section, they make terrible, terrible uh, travel projects because they're so big and bulky. Um, but this is yeah. nice and small and compact for actually being able to take it with you on the go. Right. Um, and I think one of the beautiful things about it is like visually, there is no rule about how you combine them. You can combine them however your eye likes to see it. The other thing yeah. I played with on my table was, should they all be facing vertically or could some of them face horizontally? I mean, even though that changes the border a tiny bit, that doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. you know, which way do you want them facing? Um, yeah, and it didn't buy, more a, I, I had no preference. I like them yeah, both ways. That probably gives it a slightly bit more of a patchwork quilt effect as well. When you've got, particularly if it's a very obviously cabled one going the other way, it's going to have, yeah, like much more of a patchwork feel to it. Right. Um, and again, there's no right or wrong answer. No, it's really no. a nice thing where you can just do whatever your eye likes to see. Yep. 
Yeah. And I mean, I should as well say that the there's a digital version available. So if somebody's like, I can't take any more yarn and I'm swimming in the yarn, you can actually pull it, jump into the digital version. And it means that you get to pull in your, your stash, stash as well. Yeah. So there's, you know, if the if the yarn feels overwhelming, which sometimes it can, if you feel like you've, you know, overindulged in the last few years and want to use through it, you can still kind of jump into the project with with the yarn you got available. Mm -hmm. Um going to go to look through and I am aware of, of uh, um, we've got someone who's never knit a blanket but is very tempted by this um, uh, where is it uh, Luann is excited to see the pattern uh, and someone else says cocktails and cables don't mix <laughs> you're like I find they do you. but you know <laughs> I, I think I've built an entire 12 years of my life on that but, yes, I think you you are a testament to the fact that that is not true. <laughs> and not no. all cables have to be difficult. No, no. Uh, Liz says her Galway blanket made its way to South Africa. So this one is going to be for her. Excellent. Yes, please do hold on to this one, Liz. You need a blanket. Um, uh, somebody else behind watching the video but is enjoying it. Um, oh, someone's suggesting a name for your, your cardigan. They said Cadet would be a nice name. Is it a cocktail? Uh, not a cocktail. <laughs> I don't think it's a cocktail. Most of Tia's uh, pattern all. names are cocktails. Are they all? Ah, I didn't well, if it's they not were. a co it's all. If it's not a cocktail, it's a mixer or another drink. Everything is a drink. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, why have a theme if you're not gonna lean I into it? Lean into it. Someone was asking me about what was behind me as well because it's like we have to, you know. All's fair in, in, in mannequins. The the shawl I've got hanging down here is actually in Blasta Light, and that's Kush Barriga. And the sweater behind is in Blasta, and that is a Hawthorne um, sweater. So there's two versions of that, but this is the Blasta version. So we have one in um, Newer Worsted, which they both look great, but they look totally different because Newer Worsted is worsted weight with merino yak and linen. So kind of a heavier yarn, more drape, whereas Blasta is lighter and fluffier so totally different looking, but they just both work, just different, different looking. Um, someone else encouraging saying, Liz, you need to keep some of your projects. <laughs> um, I don't think there's the, uh, Laura has popped in and said aviation is her favorite cocktail. I have never heard uh, of aviation. I do have an aviation shawl. I, I, I wonder I, is there aviation fairy so we, we left the pattern name by the time we're done here oh no no i have an aviation already it's a shawl okay it's a tip to tip oh, well. shawl yes uh, and this is the hard part is that i actually i have over 300 patterns that are self pubs plus things i've designed for elsewhere so i guess i've probably used about 350 cocktails so far yeah. but um three of my large cocktail books are underneath the computer uh, this is my cocktail shelf here, and I have other resources that I use, and sometimes <laughs> I will even make up a new cocktail to fit a name if I need to, but um, I've, but it's a never-ending uh, source of, or, you know, I go to a bar and do research. Yep, it's the hard work. For, for me, I often it's, um, when I was doing, a couple of years ago, doing a book on the mills and for each county that the mill was in, I was pulling place names, but you've got place names, you've got small towns, you've got rivers. Yeah. So there's actually a load of things you can use. And it is easier to name things on a theme because when everything's wide open, you just goes like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no. Um, I, I mean, I'm not, I, I did this, but I'm not lying. I go to bars and look at their menus for names, yeah. for ideas. Um, I, I have sometimes the drink came first and made me visualize a, a, a sweater like that's ah. that's happened. Um, inspiration comes from everywhere. And then people it's, buy me things like, you know how if you have a theme, people just buy you things. So cocktail books, I have a, a little trivia cocktail cards, like things come at me with more ideas. Often um, I try and stem that, but. <laughs> well it does make it a little easier for people to like I wonder what she'd enjoy it's like I bet she has something on cocktails let's just let's go for what it. they really Let's should say it. is I bet she has enough cocktail stuff <laughs> but 
never enough. But yeah, uh, yeah, I think that they they like the cocktail recipe that you put in that we have into the booklet, and the yeah, yes. variation we had on it should be good. Um, and it does; it gives it a little like we've got like we're doing a little mashup between cocktails and Irish, and you know there is there there was some whiskey in there if I remember correctly. Yep, it does involve yeah. Irish whiskey, and the name of the cocktail is a, and the name of the blanket is a nod to the way in which this is created. I don't know if you you say the name yet, so I'm not gonna. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the cocktails are all very intentionally matched and chosen to the project or to the yarn or to the pattern in a way that makes sense to me. It's not like I just pull them out and be like, let's yeah. call that a martini. Um, there has kind to of be fun a match to think between them. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There has to be much. Yeah. Or, or something that makes sense in my head. Um, yeah. Like often, it might, it might, for me, it might be the shape or it might be the color or it might be like something, like there might be a stitch pattern I've used in like something that's a butterfly stitch pattern. And because I try to pull in, for me, it's Irish words I'll pull in. So I'll find right. something, I'll start with, but then figuring out Irish words I can use that are not going to fry non-Irish speakers' brains where they go, it's like, I don't know what you're saying. So because well, I, I even run into that. It, I can't, whenever I try and use whiskeys, sometimes yeah. I'm like, no one's going to spell that. Yeah. They're not going to get it right. I, in fact, I released a hat years ago, Glenn Fittich, mm -hmm. and I spell it different, but people find it the way I spelled it. Whereas the the proper spelling, I don't think they, they can't get it right. And I've had a few folks from the UK be like, "That's not correct." Yeah, but no yeah, one else like, notices that it's not correct. Yeah. You're like, I deliberately spelled it wrong. So I spelled it the way you guys would find it. Yeah, um, I've got. There's a few more. Believe it or not, we've got some uh, some more suggestions coming in here. Um, good. Someone's like, "Well, there is a cocktail called Space Cadet." <laughs> <laughs> it, that doesn't feel space cadet to me no i can like it does have an aviator feel for it so so i see where a cadet came from like the collar in the front of it have a slightly military come uh, aviation I, I get that yeah it makes sense and we've got the cadet uh cocktail recipe is being written up here oh okay <laughs> oh that's great i love it so is there anything you think people should absolutely know about this project before they start? You go, are, are things that you think that could be useful in the lead up to think about or? Um, well, I, there's a lot of technique -y things, but I know you will be covering that in all of your videos. Um, I think it just, I mean, I kind of went at it with a very, um, particular eye so mm -hmm. you don't have to they don't have to just have fun with yeah. it like yeah I hope that some of these cables will be a little bit challenging where you might need to keep track and um I find there's so many hints for keeping track of a chart um just go slow highlighter sticky notes a magnet uh yeah. circling the numbers as you do them if there's a certain cable I find that if you're working a pattern and there's like 12 different stitches in it, but like one stitch is the one that bothers me, I might highlight that stitch in my chart so that I know when it's coming and I can anticipate what's below it and what's above it. And that always helps me sort of like conquer that stitch. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're not all difficult by any means, yeah. but there are a few that might have a couple things that, you know, you're going to, you're going to yeah, think like, you know, I haven't done this before. That's fine. Yeah. Um, the one just, I often you know, end up recommending people highlight is if you've got a cable where you've got like all knits going in and then you switch between knits and pearls behind them because they're the kind of things you come to the next room it's like hang on a second why have I got a knit stitch and it's meant to be a pearl they, right because those are the ones on the back row you mess it up because you're you just anticipated it being the knit instead of a pearl exactly. and then you come back to the front row and you're like wait this doesn't look right yeah. so yeah. you know just they're like, like I said, they're not all difficult at all. Some of them are quite easy, yep. but if you run into something that, that has you pause, um, think about how to make it easier for yourself instead of being like, rah, rah, rah. um, yeah. that's what I do when I run into new things. Um, yeah. 
And, the fact and, that it's just 10 inches is very, it, it's, 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 you're not ripping out an entire sweater. So it's a fantastic way of learning more complex cables as well. I think. Right. It's basically like 50 ish stitches across and 60 ish stitch, 60 something stitches up and down. And then yep. you're done. Um, yep. And also I'd say as you match your colors and your cables, think about what's showing up. Um, because you might start a square and then go, man, yeah, and pick, pick a different color um, if it's mm -hmm. not showing up, because that yeah. also is a little bit of um, of trial and error for me. And you might be using different colors or your own yarn um, and, you know, give it give it about 10 rows and be like, does this work? Yeah. Um, and possibly even give it a little bit of a steam if you've got a steamer to see, because sometimes I find that that actually even makes a difference that as it kind of as the texture will show up a little bit more after it's blocked. Mm -hmm. uh, I can sometimes be a help. Um, mm -hmm. I'm looking down here and um, check your own gauges. Yeah. Like just because my gauge was this and the pattern says this, don't forget that you might not be getting that gauge. Mm -hmm. And for many of these squares, it would be incredibly easy to play with the pearls on either side and just bring yeah. things in a little bit or bring it out a little bit and to play with the top and the bottom rows in the, the pattern as well, just to make sure that you are getting, because this is a blanket. And if one of your squares is 11 by 11 or 12 by 12, you're gonna need to re-knit that. So yeah. your gauge, and because we're talking about different patterns in each square, because your gauge is great in square eight, doesn't mean it's going to be great in square four. You're, you're talking about different stitch patterns. Um, so yeah. those are just things to be aware of, which I'm sure Carol would have covered, but that question kind yeah. of- Yeah, yeah, no, it's, and it's the kind of like at the start of the whole, because like, I obviously, Thea did the designs and then I knit my way through each of the squares um, as a rather- I talk through the charts. I show how to set it up. If there's any increases or decrease, show those. But the big part is talking through the chart um, so that explaining points where you might trip up. And we've got, there's different ways of adjusting for different sizes. Some of the times there's a few ones where it was all over texture. We've, you, there's less stitches, a couple of less stitches. Then there's a few other ones where you change the needle size and other ones where you change the actual stitch amount so that we could right, because the garter those. edges were often different than the cabled centers or the mm -hmm. the, the centers yeah. so there yeah there is adjustment for gauge in almost all of the squares I, yeah most and in some, some way or another yeah, yeah yeah and you know it might be that your gauge is always looser you like the way it is then just make all of the sizes that much bigger like that you know that you can actually you can decide to say I'm making them smaller. I'm making the bigger because you prefer the actual um, the way it looks because it's not it's not to fit you. Once they match each other, that's what's most important with the blanket, really. right? Yeah, for um, once you're not worried about fit at all. Yep, it, they just have to match each other. <laughs> so you make them um, all twelve by twelve, but they just all have to match. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't. It, and you know, you, we fortunately we have put a lot of extra yarn in because. The square is used about uh, one and a half skeins of the yarn. It means that you get two of each color, but the design has only got three. So there's a half a skein extra with each, which is actually really nice. So it means that if you use a little more or if you want to experiment, you've got a small bit more yarn as well. So there's, um, yeah, so for the small size, it's eight skeins will come. So two of each color. But if you actually weigh them out, it uses about it's about 600, I think, or so. So it does mean that you've got a bit of flexibility and a bit of extra yarn to play with, which is always good in my book. Yeah, you can even make your own square if you're yep. doing the eight extra squares. There was you one last. Right? Oh, I, I can't remember who did it. And there was we had the blanket we had last year. It was all in the gall in the gall of yarn. And she did, she wanted to do the bigger throw and she did most of the ones, but she did it as all of them outside. And then she picked a very elaborate um, cabled pattern. I think it might have been like a, a dragon or something. It was a motif. And she did one huge square in the middle and then attached all the small ones around it, like totally wow. made it her own. But it was, but still used all of the individual squares for basically the border. So like a totally different take, but definitely fell under the category of making the blanket her own for sure. <laughs> um, I've got, hang on, we've got, someone is asking how much yardage will be in on a square just about in case, in case you say sensible and go with the digital version. Um, 
I've got like the the I don't know the yardage yet, but I do for the Blasta. There's I was getting two squares per game when the Blasta. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it's there's two hundred and thirty two yards in one of these, so um you will comfortably have enough for with half of this for a square, which is let me do the math. It's a hundred about a hundred and fifteen yards um, per square will cover pretty much all of the sizes. So. For me, when I was weighing them, the heaviest one, I think, was about 43 grams in terms of the actual weight of it. So basically, yeah, there was there was no time where I needed more than one square, no. one, more than one skein for two squares. And it does. It varied by as much like some of them would be as little as 35 grams and other ones would be up to 43, depending on how heavily textured it was. So it varied a little bit by that. Um I'm just checking. Libby was asking, uh, did I say if if the. Uh, did Thea design all of the squares and the pattern and then answer is that if I just answered that. Yep, she did. She designed all the squares. So that was my it, actual job here. That was that was my <laughs> one and only job. Thea designed the squares. We made the well, we didn't make the yarn. We we kind of did the yarn with Dunny Gold yarns. Um I've edited with um with our tech editor the patterns and then I've put the videos together. So it's and we did it, but there's a lot of toing and froing with how we worked, which was actually it was fun for both of us because we do we think a little differently. So it kind of I definitely learned a huge amount from the process. I hope I hope you did. I can't I can't speak for you, but no, I did. I mean, it was it was eye opening in in terms of how I think and in terms of like how complicated a square can be. Um, yeah. I can I can make anything complicated apparently. <laughs> and now you can't say you've never designed a blanket before because this is your very first blanket design yes although i am not putting this together you are <laughs> it, it may be it may be magali here in the office maybe i i've done the first right. bit and i may end up handing the job over and there are that's even something that's another entire discussion there's so many ways of putting it together both not just how you lay it out but how you steam it so we'll even be giving you options with that you'll have so many options you will not know what to do with it, basically. <laughs> uh, Libby is saying it sounds like a really great, fun collaboration. It absolutely was, I think. It, it was. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, you're, I'm so used to thinking in one direction. Yeah. Garments, scarves, hats. It was It was nice to get out of that box. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in a different just, box. Yeah. In a different, <laughs> and, and then find out I was in another box. Like, honestly, I think the details with this were more complicated than the details with some of my sweaters um, yeah. because I the, just... they're everything because the cables and the details are everything because there's nothing else going on. You're not combining with sh increases. Right. I don't have the transitions to make things do what I want them to do. I had it's to, all I, about I, the I stitch only had a square with no other tools, which yeah. was fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and very different. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, Thea. It's just been a pleasure uh, talking welcome. with you. It's yeah, we could probably go on for hours, but I am not going to take up your entire day because I know you need to finish packing for your trip. I got to go <laughs> get a suitcase. I realized that I've, I've loaned my suitcase to my daughters enough time that I pulled it. Out. I need the large suitcase because I'm teaching four different classes and they all require like a lot of samples. Um, yeah. For those of you who don't know, I'm off to Santa Fe, New Mexico tomorrow morning um, to teach, um, you know, in preparation for coming to Ireland in the future. And yeah, and um, so you you need your big suitcase for the I Irish Arcade Festival. And yeah. <laughs> both of my daughters have used it and the wheels don't work. The fabric is ripping. The zipper tabs <laughs> are gone. Um, and I do need yes. the huge one. So I'm actually going to hang up and go, uh, go suitcase shopping, a suitcase and then get back and finish everything I need to do. Oh, well, thank you very much. And thank you all for joining us. Anyone who come along afterwards, it's up here. It's going to be on YouTube. It'll probably take a little bit before it gets up, but it will be there shortly. Thank you for joining us. Bye. All right. Bye. That's all right. They're still, they're gone. I'm going to. All right. I believe the stream has ended now. Thank you so much, Thea. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm like, I have no idea what that looked like, but yay. No, I think um, it was great. I think people will absolutely love it. Um, yeah. So it's 